Let's follow a data extraction session in ESPR. This is another in the series from Strategies for Deploying Virtual Representations of the Built Environment. To find out more, check out the web page. ESPR includes data mining facilities by way of its RES application. Users can use RES interactively to explore a range of performance issues by way of tabular and time step reports, as well as graphs. It's also possible to automate data extraction workflows and convert the output to Word documents. Let's get started. The context of this session is a residence, typical of early post-war construction in the UK. As is typical in the UK, bedrooms tend to be kept at a cooler temperature so that although each room of the residence is separately modeled, the model includes groups of zones that are named so that it's easy to alter the focus from the whole dwelling to the living area to the rooms with a lower set point. The model also includes predefined simulation parameter sets, one for the month of March, as well as an annual assessment. These parameter sets hold directives so that the simulation runs can be invoked with little or no user interaction. Our task in the project manager is to start a simulation, selecting a relevant period, let's choose March, and ask for an integrated simulation. Since I know that this simulation will run, I'll choose the automated path with minimum user feedback. So there's the March assessment running. And at the end of the process, my next step would be to go to results analysis. That would then be past the name of the just completed results file and open up. In an interactive mode, I might go into the graphic area to parameter plots and, for example, look at dry bulb temperatures and draw that graph. So I'm seeing many things that I would expect to see, but I might also want to go and focus in on the, no the living space itself, clear the selections, let's look at the dry bulb temperature outside as well as the temperatures inside and to get an idea of comfort let's look at zone mean radiant temperature and draw that now i see there's a difference between the dry bulb and the mean radiant temperature graphs are one area but there are all kinds of reports that are available in esp for example we can inquire about energy delivered if we choose that for all of the zones we get a very classic report in ESP. It talks about, for each of the zones, the sensible heating, the sensible cooling, and humidification, dehumidification. Now, I have no controls at the moment related to humidification or dehumidification, so I will probably want to remove that from any report going to the client. In terms of sensible heating, we've got in kilowatt hours, kilowatt hours per square meter, and hours required. Let's look in summary statistics. For example, we've got a item here, heat, cooling, humidify, and we can get the sensible load in each of the zones. And this is another classic ESP report. So units in kilowatts, when's, what's the maximum? When does it occur? What's the minimum? When does it occur? Mean and standard deviations. And then we have a diversified total at the bottom and the time when that occurred. Looking through these various topics, I would then build up an idea about what things would be useful to include in an automation. For example, let's go and look at what is the one of the classic things that drives the need for heating 
is infiltration. And so now I have watts in each of the room over the month, and I'm getting when was the maximum and the minimum of where infiltration was an issue. Ventilation is the impact of airflow between rooms. Again, these are relatively small numbers at the moment. And we saw a graph of temperatures earlier. Let's go and look and see what the statistics for mean radiant temperature are. And then monthly gains and losses is another very common report. There are quite a few options here. So we've got lots of columns. We can choose a subset of them. So instead of reporting on all the heat transfer at all surface types, we could look at those only at the facade. In terms of casual gains, we could report separate types or in aggregate, air movement to the infiltration only, so solar only that entering the room. And then if we proceed to the closest 100 watt hours, we get a relatively compact report. If instead we took the defaults, we end up with a rather verbose report with lots of columns. Might be difficult to put that into a uh, normally formatted document, although the information would be quite good for the simulation team itself. So exiting the results my next task is to start up res in text mode. This is what the interface looks like. We've got commands given in terms of a single character at a time. So four looks at zones, and then I can do the shriek to get all groups of zones. B to choose that. So these are the kinds of things commands I would type D for uh, inquire about, F for energy delivered, and there is my energy delivered. So my task is to go through each of these topics that I would like to uh, explore in a final report in the order I would like them and use that to develop a script. So I'm going to pull up the script I created. It starts with slash bin seashell um, for the interpreter. It sets res file as the first parameter that's given. And then invokes res in text mode with that hashed parameter. And then the individual keystrokes are given to select the zones choose the particular topics, navigate through the interface in the order that I want, in the topics that I want. Now, I then want to change the focus to the living group and issue the same commands again, and then the non-living group and issue the same commands again. And it ends with .xxx, which is my symbolism when I invoked it to read up until I get to XXX. I've called this script extract, and then I would like to run it. So dot slash extract forces it to be the extract file in this particular directory, and I give it the results file to act on. Hit return, and it goes through the sequence of keystrokes. And now let's see what we've got. I'd first like to edit the data file that was created, have a look at it, pull this into a text editor, to have a look. I want to confirm that the information in there is correct and in the correct order that I've asked for it. 
and it does seem to be the case. My next task, let's do it for Markdown. Now, there's a small difference I need to make into the script um, in order to invoke Markdown, and so let's just review that difference. Effectively, it's one additional command to switch it into Markdown mode, and then to change the output file name to identify that. So I would now like to run the Markdown version of the script with the result file. And that works its way through the various command sequences and generates a file. I'd like to look at the differences between the standard text output file and that of the Markdown version. Now, there are many, many places on the internet where you can find out about Markdown and what the syntax means. In this particular case, we've got essentially the same reports, but we preface certain lines with some characters to set font sizes, and then we have uh, dash lines that get added in, which define the nature of tables to be created. My next task is to invoke pandoc, pandoc-s for standalone, give it the markdown file, dash o, and then the output file, which in this case is docx, to give it a hint about the format it should produce. So I'd like to prove, yes, I proved that pandoc can run without error, but I would like to go and edit the markdown file itself before I make my final document so that I can take care of some of the issues that I noted earlier. For example, humidification I'm not particularly interested in, so I'm going to remove that from the Markdown document. It's much easier to do it there than it is to remove the relevant part within Word. So. I'll save that and rerun pandoc command. And then I would like to open up the resulting Word document and have a look at it. And here we have performance report for results detached 1940. Scroll it where I can see it a little bit better. Okay, so here is a much better formatted document. It still needs a little bit of work, but essentially the tables appear to be working reasonably well. Ah, monthly gains and losses. Yeah, that's not particularly good. What I'd like to do is highlight that section and let's try a slightly different font size. How oh, about uh, nine points? or eight points. Ah, and that works much better. And I would carry on doing that. And at the end of the process, I've got an appendix that I can then add to my other reporting to communicate with the client.